Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. This video is brought to you by Picmonic. Let's continue our famous microbiology series. Today, it's part 9 in our microbiology discussion. Today, we're talking about some gram-negative bacteria. These are the topics that we talked about in the first video, second video, third video, fourth video. All of these were gram positives. Video number five, some gram positives and acid fast organisms. Video number six, we started talking about gram negatives. Same thing with seven and eight. Today, we're continuing gram negative bacteria. In today's video, we'll talk about Campylobacter jejuni, Vibrio cholera, Escherichia coli, and Klebsiella pneumoniae. Bloody diarrhea, watery diarrhea, watery or bloody, depending on the type, pneumonia. Microbiology is the study of small life. Microbes could be divided into bacteria, fungi, viruses, and parasites. Technically, parasites are not microscopic, they are macroscopic, because you can see them with the unaided eye. And that's why the field of microbiology consists of bacteriology, fungology or mycology, virology, and parasitology. By using the gram stain, bacteria are either gram positive or gram negative. Gram positives appear purple, gram negatives appear pink. Each one is divided into spherical bacteria, known as cocci, and bacteria that are shaped like rods, called bacilli. Today, we are talking about gram negative bacilli. Let's review what we talked about in previous videos. The gram positives include cocci and rods. The cocci, well, some are catalase positive, these are the staph, and some are catalase negative, these are the strep. As for the gram positive rods, you gotta ask yourself, are they spore forming or non-spore forming? If they do not make spores, ask yourself, are they aerobic or anaerobic? And these were talked about in video number one. But if they are spore forming, ask yourself, are they aerobic or anaerobic? The anaerobic, i.e. clostridia, were discussed in video number two. Staph aureus, staph epidermidis, staph saprophyticus were talked about in video number three. In video number four, we talked about the streptococci. In video 5, we talked about Bacillus anthracis, which causes anthrax, Bacillus cereus, which causes diarrhea and food poisoning, as well as the acid-fast Mycobacterium tuberculosis, which causes tuberculosis, and Mycobacterium leprae, which causes leprosy. Pause and review. As for the gram negatives, cocci or rods, the cocci could be diplococci, which means it's a double coccus, or could be coccobacilli, which is kind of in between, partly coccus and partly bacillus. As for the rods, bacilli or curved, or you can say curved versus non-curved. In video number six, we talked about Neisseria meningitidis, Neisseria gonorrhea, and Moraxella catarralis. In part seven, we talked about Haemophilus influenzae, Bordetella, Pertussis, Pastorella, Brucella, and Francisella. All of these are gram-negative coccobacilli. In the last video, we talked about Helicobacter pylori, which is a curved rod, and Legionella nemophila, which is a bacillus. Today, was still gram-negative rods. The curved rods that we'll talk about today include Campylobacter jejuni and Vibrio cholera. The non-curved gram-negative rods include Escherichia coli and Klebsiella pneumoniae, both of which are lactose fermenters. They do ferment lactose sugar. If you want some really nice charts that help you memorize bacteria, go to Picmonic. Link is in the description box. If the bacteria ferment lactose, they will appear as pink colonies on McConkey agar. But if they do not ferment lactose, they will appear as white colonies on McConkey. In this Picmonic, we'll review the characteristics, signs, and symptoms of Campylobacter jejuni, illustrated by this camping scene in June. This is a gram negative organism, denoted by the gram cracker negative devil. Campylobacter is also bacillus shaped, represented by the rod. Campylobacter jejuni all utilize flagella, indicated by the flag, that provide motility and can be unipolar or bipolar. Additionally, recent research indicates that these flagella also impart virulence benefit to the pathogen. It is important to note that Campylobacter is curved, usually characterized as comma or S-shaped, and is often described as having a corkscrew appearance, shown as the curved corkscrew. Microbiologically, it is catalase positive and oxidase positive, recalled by the ox daisy. 
It also grows well at 42 degrees, which assists in differentiating this organism compared to others that don't grow in hot temperatures, and is depicted as the campfire at 42 degrees. This infectious agent is found in undercooked poultry, which is visualized by the raw chicken. It can also be contracted by unpasteurized milk, pictured by the puppy drinking milk straight from the cow's udders. Additionally, infection can occur after exposure to puppies with diarrhea, exhibited by the puppy feces. One of the major signs and symptoms of Campylobacter infection is bloody diarrhea, seen here as the red toilet. Note that only approximately 15% of infected adults present with bloody diarrhea, while more than half of similarly affected children will present with bloody diarrhea. In other words, infection with Campylobacter commonly presents on licensing exams with bloody diarrhea, though clinically, this is not always the case. A severe possible sequela of infection is the potential of developing Guillain-Barre syndrome. This is an acute onset ascending paralysis that can be triggered by Campylobacter infection. And here we show Guillain-Barre syndrome as a green beret. Also associated with Campylobacter is Reiter syndrome, or reactive arthritis, which is a post-infectious autoimmune inflammatory condition affecting the joints, eyes, and urethra is visualized as the writer King Arthur, and you can use the mnemonic, can't see, can't pee, can't climb a tree, to help you remember the cornerstones of writer syndrome. Treatment for Campylobacter infection is usually reserved for severe infections, but consists primarily of erythromycin, though azithromycin and ciprofloxacin are also used. So in summary, Campylobacter is a gram-negative bacillus that sports a flagella. It is commonly described as curved, comma, or S-shaped, and can be described as having a corkscrew appearance. It is catalase and oxidase positive and grows well at 42 degrees, helping to differentiate it from other bacteria. It is usually contracted via undercooked poultry, pasteurized milk, or interaction with puppies with diarrhea. Infection with Campylobacter commonly presents on licensing exams with bloody diarrhea, though clinically this is not always the case. It is associated with both Guillain-Barre syndrome and Reiter syndrome. And the mainstay of treatment is erythromycin, while azithromycin and ciprofloxacin can also be used as alternatives. Let's review. Campylobacter jejuni is a gram-negative rod. It is curved, it is flagellated, and has a classic corkscrew appearance. Oxidase is positive and can grow in warm temperatures. Risk factors include eating undercooked chicken, being exposed to puppies with diarrhea or drinking unpasteurized milk. Humans might suffer from bloody diarrhea, reactive arthritis, and Guillain-Barre. Vibrio cholera, portrayed by the vibrating collie, is a gram-negative bacillus represented by the gram-negative character holding a rod for bacillus. It can be distinguished from other gram-negative rods because it is glucose-fermenting, portrayed by the glue bottle with the fern growing from it, and non-lactose fermenting, illustrated by the nun holding the milk carton with a dead fern. This bacteria is also oxidase positive, shown by the ox daisy. The characteristic shape of cholera is comma-shaped, depicted by the comma-shaped shrimp, similar to Campylobacter jejuni. However, the factor that distinguishes Vibrio cholera from Campylobacter jejuni is that Vibrio cholera thrives in alkaline environments portrayed by the comma-shaped shrimp, thriving in the more alkaline environment, according to the pH scale. Additionally, Vibrio species are classically found in seafood, particularly crustaceans, portrayed by the vibrating collie eating the shrimp. Vibrio cholera is a gram-negative rod. Does it ferment glucose? Yay! Does it ferment lactose? No! That's why the colonies appear white on McConkie agar. Vibrio cholera is oxidase positive, unlike Campylobacter jejuni, which was corkscrew shaped. Vibrio cholera is comma shaped. And unlike Campylobacter, which grows in warm temperatures, Vibrio cholera grows in an alkaline environment, just like your intestines, because your intestines have alkaline environment thanks to the hormone secretin, which stimulated your pancreatic ducts to make water and bicarbonate. And don't forget crustaceans. Now let me show you how the toxin of Vibrio cholera works. It's an enterotoxin. What does that mean? A toxin that works on your intestine. How does it work? It is GS coupled, which means it will activate adenylate cyclase, 
which converts ATP into cyclic AMP. The cyclic AMP in your intestinal cells will open chloride channels, leading to chloride secretion from your intestinal cells into the lumen of the intestine. Chloride is negative. Who's gonna follow the negative? The positive, sodium. Who's going to follow the salt? The answer is water. Tons of water by osmosis. That's why you end up with watery diarrhea, usually described as rice watery diarrhea. This can lead to severe extracellular fluid volume depletion, which can be fatal. That's why the management consists of replacing what the patient lost. The patient lost water, we're giving water, but not just water, water and electrolytes as well. Vibrio cholera, shown by the vibrating collie is a gram-negative bacteria that causes a life-threatening diarrhea. This organism secretes an ADP ribosylating AB toxin, portrayed by the ADP Red Bull for ribosylating, with an apple and B on its shoulders for AB toxin, which causes the GS subunit of adenyl cyclase to be locked in an on position, resulting in the increase of CAMP within the cell. This is portrayed by the ADP Red Bull, pushing the button marked the G-spot with the up arrows of CAMPs. This sustains the channel's secretory ability with continued secretion of CL into the gut lumen, shown by the CL ions being secreted into the intestines. Vibrio cholera also leads to a blocked reabsorption of sodium in the gut, portrayed by the sodium being trapped in the intestines and leads to a characteristic rice water diarrhea, shown by the toilet in the rice fields. Vibrio cholera disease, ADP ribosylating AB enterotoxin. The GS will be permanently turned on, raising the cyclic AMP, which opens chloride channels, so chloride is secreted into the lumen of the gut. Who's gonna follow it? sodium which is also secreted which means not absorbed into the lumen of the gut water is gonna follow them giving you the classic rice water diarrhea of vibrio cholera you manage this by replenishing fluids and electrolytes and giving doxycycline or another tetracycline e coli represented in this picmonic as the e coli is a story that plays out like a board game E. coli is a gram-negative bacterium, shown as the graham cracker negative devil, and has a bacillus shape, depicted by the rod. When visualized on growth media, these bacteria can be differentiated from other gram-negative rods because of their distinct appearance as purple colonies with a metallic green sheen, illustrated as the purple and green yin-yang with a metallic sheen. These bacteria are lactose-fermenting, the milk carton ferns, which causes these bacteria to grow as pink colonies on McConkie auger, the pink monkey petri dish. Though E. coli is part of the normal flora, ingestion of pathogenic strains can still cause illness, such as diarrhea, shown by the toilet. These different E. coli strains are categorized based on virulence factors, including lipid A, P. pili, K. antigen, and H. antigen, all of which can elicit different immune responses. On E. coli's outer lipopolysaccharide membrane is a component known as lipid A, which can cause septic shock in individuals, portrayed as the lips A apple with the shocking sepsis snake. Some pathogenic strains of E. coli contain P. pili, which binds to a specific disaccharide found on the surfaces of uroepithelial cells. As a result, strains with P. pili are strongly associated with pyelonephritis and cystitis, the pillars with the inflamed kidney and bladder. The K capsule refers to a polysaccharide capsule that surrounds some pathogenic strains of E. coli. Pathogenic strains with a K capsule can cause neonatal meningitis, the men in tights with babies wearing K caps, and K-capsule also leads to pneumonia, seen as nude Mona wearing a K-cap. Of note, the H antigen refers to a flagella on the bacterium, shown by the H ant gem with the flagella. So let's quickly go through the overview of E. coli once more. These bacteria are gram-negative bacilli, which appear as purple colonies with a metallic green sheen. Because they are lactose-fermenting, colonies appear pink on McConkie auger. Ingestion of E. coli can lead to diarrhea, and there are several other virulence factors found in pathogenic strains of E. coli that can cause more serious illnesses. Lipid A, which is found in the lipid membrane of these bacteria, can cause septic shock, while the P. pili allows the bacteria to bind to uroepithelial cells, causing pyelonephritis and cystitis. 
Some strains have a K-capsule, which can cause neonatal meningitis, and this K-capsule virulence factor also contributes to the development of pneumonia. E. coli also have an H antigen, which is a term used to describe their flagella. E. coli is a gram-negative rod, classic green colonies with metallic green sheen. But since it is lactose fermenter, it will show pink colonies on McConkie. Diarrhea is common. Lipid A can trigger a septic shock. The P pili, just remember P, pyelonephritis. The K capsule is neonatal meningitis. And the flagella has the H antigen. The way I remembered is that I just say flagella with the H at the end. H antigen. Crazy, I know. Klebsiella, portrayed in this picmonic as the clubbing sea lion, is a gram-negative bacterium, shown as the gram cracker negative devil, with a bacillus shape, the rod. This organism is classified as being oxidase negative, the wilting ox daisy, and is often a part of the normal intestinal flora, illustrated as the intestinal flowers. One feature aiding this bacteria's resilience is its antiphagocytic virulence factor, the tied-up MACMAN, which is its prominent polysaccharide capsule, represented by the polysac capsule, aiding in its ability to elude phagocytosis. This capsule, however, is easily tested for, as this organism has a positive quail lung reaction, shown by the positive quail lungs, where antibodies bind to its capsule. Klebsiella is also notable for producing large mucoid colonies, the mucus trail. It can be differentiated from other gram-negative bacilli because it is urease positive, shown as the positive U eraser, and is a fast lactose fermenter, the fast milk carton ferns, causing this bacteria to grow as pink colonies on McConkie agar, depicted by the pink monkey on the Petri dish. So let's wrap up the characteristics of Klebsiella. This is a gram-negative bacillus, which is oxidase negative. Often this is part of the normal intestinal flora, it eludes immunologic destruction by an antiphagocytic virulence factor, which is a polysaccharide capsule. This can be detected easily as it causes a positive quellung reaction. And while on microscopy, we see that Klebsiella grows in mucoid colonies. This bacteria is urease positive and is a fast lactose fermenter, meaning it grows as pink colonies on McConkie agar. Klebsiella is a gram-negative rod that is oxidase negative. It's part of your flora and it's able to evade your immune system by means of its polysaccharide capsule. And because it has that capsule, it has the positive Quellung reaction. What else had a positive Quellung reaction that you've studied before? If you said Streptococcus pneumoniae, you're absolutely correct. By the way, the word quellung is German for swelling, swelling of the capsule. Klebsiella is urease positive, which means it can convert urea into ammonia. Klebsiella is lactose fermenter, and we have pink colonies on McConkie. Klebsiella, portrayed here as a clubbing sea lion, is a gram-negative bacterium which can cause a wide range of diseases. Klebsiella pneumoniae is commonly associated with cases of aspiration pneumonia, depicted as the aspirating ass spraying water on nude mona. Alcoholics, represented by the alcoholic martini, are often the types of patients that get this infection, as there is a high association with excessive drinking and subsequent vomiting. Diabetics, represented by the dibead pancreas, also have a higher proclivity towards developing Klebsiella infections. Patients with Klebsiella pneumoniae often cough up characteristic sputum described as red currant jelly sputum, shown by the jar of red currant jelly, and this description is often seen on examinations, helping to clue you in on the offending organism. Severe pneumonia can also lead to lung abscesses, the abscess character with lungs. Besides pneumonia, Klebsiella is also associated with nosocomial urinary tract infections, depicted by the ambulance and the urinary tract on fire on this character. So in short, Klebsiella has a wide range of diseases it is associated with. First, it is often seen in aspiration pneumonia, which is more commonly seen in alcoholics. Diabetics are more susceptible to Klebsiella infections, and those with Klebsiella pneumonia cough up a classic red currant jelly sputum. Severe infections can lead to lung abscesses, while another systemic manifestation is nosocomial UTI. Klebsiella pneumonia disease includes pneumonia, especially in patients who are alcoholics, 
suffering from pancreatitis or the elderly and immunocompromised. Don't forget the current jelly sputum as well as lung abscesses. Klebsiella can also lead to urinary tract infections. Pickmonic is not just good for mnemonics, they will also quiz you after each Pickmonic. Please try to answer these three questions and let me know the correct answer in the comment section. There are more than 1800 Pickmonics. Multiply that by 6 questions each, that's bare minimum, and you get more than 10,000 multiple choice questions. You can have access to all of this today by using the link in the description. And for a limited time, by using this link, you can get 24 months for the price of 12. You can even browse those Picmonics by your favorite book or favorite subject or system. You can answer many questions every day and create your own study schedule. This is my step-by-step -step method of how I master these Picmonics. When you combine visual with audio with storytelling, reading the script, spaced repetition, quizzing yourself, create Creating your own picmonics, you become invincible. Now let's compare among Campylobacter jejuni, Vibrio cholera, E. coli, and Klebsiella. All of them are gram negatives, all of them are rods. Campylobacter and Vibrio cholera are curved rods. Campylobacter jejuni can cause bloody diarrhea, Guillain-Barre reactive arthritis, don't forget undercooked chicken, undercooked meat, unpasteurized milk, exposed to puppies with diarrhea. Diagnosed with Gram's stain and culture, treatment is erythromycin or another macrolide. As for Vibrio cholera, contaminated water or undercooked food, especially in endemic areas. Rice water diarrhea, do not forget the mechanism which is keeping the GS permanently activated. Severe life-threatening watery diarrhea unlike Campylobacter, which was bloody diarrhea. Campylobacter was corkscrew, but cholera is comma-shaped. Don't forget to give me water and electrolytes and doxycycline. E. coli, very common causes of G, I, and G, U infections. Urinary tract infections, neonatal meningitis, pneumonia. Don't forget the E. tech is traveler diarrhea or toxigenic diarrhea. And this is watery. But E. heck is hemorrhagic, which is bloody. By the way, there is a specific picmonic just above the enterohemorrhagic E. coli. Both E. coli and Klebsiella are lactose fermenters, so pink colonies on McConkie. UTIs are treated with TMP SMX in most cases. Klebsiella pneumoniae causes pneumonia and lung abscess, especially in the old, the immunocompromised, the alcoholic, the patients with acute pancreatitis, etc. Current jelly sputum. Now, can you name a disease where the patient has current jelly stool? Let me know the answer in the comment section. You treat Klebsiella pneumoniae with ciftriaxone intravenously or one of the respiratory fluoroquinolones. Quick review of Campylobacter jejuni. Remember, it's a gram negative rod, corkscrew, curved, and flagellated. Oxidase positive can grow in 42 degrees Celsius. Unpasteurized milk, undercooked chicken, puppies with diarrhea, bloody diarrhea in humans, reactive arthritis, and Guillain-Barre with the ascending paralysis. Next is Vibrio cholera, gram-negative rods. Don't forget the comma shape. Do they ferment glucose? Yes. Do they ferment lactose? No. They thrive in alkaline environments. Vibrio cholera causes severe watery diarrhea, known as rice water diarrhea, thanks to the permanent activation of GS and the permanent rise of cyclic AMP. ADP ribosylating AB toxin. What else has ADP ribosylating AB toxin? If you say Corynebacterium diphtheria, you should be proud of yourself. E. coli is a gram-negative rod, purple colonies with metallic green sheen. Lactose fermenter, that's why we have the pink monkey. Diarrhea, septic shock, thanks to lipid A. Neonatal meningitis, thanks to the K-capsule. Pyelonephritis, it hurts when I pee because of the pee. 
papillae, and the flagella has the H antigen. Clipsial pneumoniae, gram-negative rod, part of your normal flora, it has a polysaccharide capsule, therefore positive equilung reaction. Both Streptococcus pneumoniae and Clipsial pneumoniae are capsulated, both have positive equilung reaction, and both infect your lung. Quilung and lung. Pneumoniae and pneumoniae. Strep pneumoniae is gram positive, but Clipsial pneumoniae is gram negative. Mucoid colonies, lactose fermenters, that's why we have the pink monkey and the RUDA is positive. That's one of the reasons they can lead to urinary tract infections and stones. Clipsial pneumonia can lead to aspiration pneumonia, lung abscess, urinary tract infections, especially in alcoholics and patients with acute pancreatitis. Enjoy more than 1,800 Picmonics if you subscribe today to Picmonic. They have mnemonics about many bacteria, many viruses, fungi, parasites, and not only microbiology Picmonics, but also every subject that you can imagine. Whether you want to be a doctor, nurse, physician assistant, etc., Picmonic can help you. You can even watch and re-watch those Picmonics on your phone or tablet. Go to picmonic.com slash VIP hookup slash medicosis and they will hook you up. I've been using Picmonic for more than 10 years. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Schneris, where medicine makes perfect sense. Thank you guys for watching and thank you Picmonic for sponsoring this video.